Second year, they bring in a new whole, a whole new staff on the offensive side of the ball. And it's no different than anything else in life, right? Like they may bring in a new boss and you just don't fit the new boss, right? And that's kind of what it was for me. I didn't fit the system. Boom, I get cut. Nobody picks me up. So the end of 2011, I'm out of football. I'm living with my sister in an apartment. NFL life sounds glamorous, doesn't it, guys? She's got a newborn baby upstairs. I'm an NFL player. I'm living in a box this big. I'm slinging tires. I was slinging, I found a local tire warehouse just to make some money so I could pay my sister rent. I'm working out with my buddy who I played with with the Eagles who also got cut. I'm, I'm gonna be ready for the moment when I get it. Nothing comes the whole year. January 22nd, 2012. I get a phone call. A guy by the name of Ryan Grigson. Ryan Grigson was a scout for the Philadelphia Eagles when I was with the Philadelphia Eagles. One of the few people that loved me as a player in that organization before I got cut. He becomes the new general manager of the Indianapolis Colts. AQ, we want to sign you. This is where all the stars started to align for me. This was it. I knew I just needed one opportunity. This is where all the stars started to align for me. I got a guy in my corner who's now the new GM. Boom. That's the first thing, I get signed. Indianapolis Colts hire Chuck Pagano. I don't know Chuck Pagano, but what I do know is a guy by the name of Bruce Arians. Those of you guys from here should know who Bruce Arians is. They hired Bruce Arians as the offensive coordinator. Bruce Arians was my offensive coordinator in Pittsburgh my rookie year. So, boom, there we go. I got two people in my corner. Offensive line coach was my offensive line coach in Pittsburgh. I got three people in my corner. So now things are starting to align. And so I go through that whole off season feeling good about life, feeling good about where everything is. I know more about NFL game than I ever have. And it's starting to click. I'm like, all right, here we go. I don't get the starting job. They brought in a center by the name of Samson Satelli. They signed him to like a pretty big deal. Like he was, he was making five, $6 million a year. So they were, I was still making like a low contract. So they're like, can't play him. You're gonna be a back. Perfect, sounds good. I'm gonna be ready when I get that opportunity. He gets hurt. Week four, again, this is, this is a big thing. So if you wanna write something down from tonight, this is something you wanna write down. There's gonna be a moment that comes in everybody's life. You don't know when it's gonna happen. You don't know why it's gonna happen. You don't know where it's gonna happen. You don't know how it's gonna happen. But if you're always prepared for that moment, good things are gonna happen. So here we are. It's week four to 2012 NFL season. Had no idea that was gonna be the moment, but I was preparing every single week like I was the starter. If he would've ever gotten hurt in a game, I was ready to roll. I knew the playbook, I knew the game plan, I knew everything like the back of my hand. I was going to be, from this point forward, the most professional player in the NFL, and I was gonna be the smartest guy in every room because you weren't gonna take that away from me. I was gonna be prepared. So we're getting ready to play the Green Bay Packers. Samson Satelli gets hurt. AQ, you're starting. Cool, I'm starting. I'm getting my first start in the NFL. It's 2012, week four. Green Bay Packers are coming to town. They got Aaron Rodgers, Clay Matthews. They just won the Super Bowl the year before. They got everybody. They're loaded. Great defensive line. Now, here's the other thing people don't realize. When you're a backup in the NFL, you get zero reps with the starters at all, zero. You are running the other team's plays against the, against the starting defense. So in order to get in shape, you gotta do extra stuff in the weight room, you gotta run extra, you gotta do all these different things that you don't see behind the scenes in order to be ready, because now, if you're expected to play in this game, and we're about to play 75, 80 plays against a top-notch team, you better be ready to roll. And we expect you to play as good, if not better, than the guy who was in there. We're down 24 to three at the half. Not going good. What do we do? We have the largest comeback in Indianapolis Colts history. We come back, we win 31 to 30. Now they have since beat it because they had a big comeback a couple years later, but we come back, we win 31-30. I couldn't have asked for a better first start in the NFL. It was unbelievable. We're down 24 to three against Aaron Rodgers, who's gonna be a Hall of Famer, one of the best players in the world. Like, you don't come back like that. Boom, we come back, we win the game. Skyrocketing my career. From that point forward, started 70 more games. Played in 120 in the NFL. I played for another decade after that. And so, here's the funny part. 
the Friday before that game, I get a call in from the offensive line coach. His name's Harold Goodwin. Good buddy of mine to this day. Tampa Bay's offensive line coach right now. Calls me in, he says, hey, you ready? I said, yeah, I think I'm ready. He says, well, I just talked to Ryan Griggs and the GM. They're bringing two guys in on Tuesday. If you don't play well, we're gonna cut you. They're gonna bring him in. Some people, that ruins them. They go out, they lay an egg, they're cut, right? I played 101 snaps that day. I had like a 98% success rate on my day. It was like the, one of the better games I've ever played. Like I needed somebody to put that pressure on me to go out when the bright lights were shining and do that because that was just kind of the way I operated at that time.